Once we've derived the, the, the element equations, then we have to assemble them. Now, uh, before you really go into assembling the element equations, you need to look at, uh, relook at your discretization of your domain. So I've just um, reproduced what we, what we talked about before, uh, splitting up our domain. So if we split up our domain, and this goes uh, from x equals 0 to x equals L, whatever the length of this heated rod is in this example, and we have uh, four, uh, four segments, one, two, three, four, and for each of these segments we have a local numbering system, so uh, when we're working with this segment one, uh, we have the lower bound is one and the upper bound is two, so x1, x2. But here again, we reuse those same numbers uh, so that we can reuse our, our, our same derivation uh, that we did before. Uh, when we're working with element 2, we have lower bound 1, upper bound 2. But in global coordinates, that's x2 and x3. So in order to deal with this, we make a little table that says element, uh, local, global, so it keeps track of, of what element we're working on. So if we're working on the first element, we have the local coordinates x1, x2, but the global coordinates are 1, 2. See, then we have the second element, and that's 1, 2 locally, yes, but globally it's 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, and you see how it works. Now this is pretty straightforward in two dimensions, but if you try to go, excuse me, in one dimension, if you're just doing a one-dimensional rod, if you try to go into two dimensions and you're working with triangular uh, mesh uh, elements, you, you're gonna it, you're gonna get lost, and so this is a really important step. Uh, once you've done that, then uh, then you can start assembling the equations. Now, if you'll recall from our previous step, we had a two by two system of equations, and you can see right here, uh, that's where the two by two system of equations comes in, and we just write it directly in. This. So this is T1, uh, T2, we write that directly in. The next step is is to introduce our, uh, our second set of equations. Now, the, this entire, um, this entire entry, so you see that the 2, 2, so we look at the 2, 2 element here in this matrix, it's the combination of these two, and so this is the whole block, the whole new block is equal to the old block plus, and, and see where it got combined, uh, was right here where we combined the two conditions, 0.4 plus 0.4, and see we're doing a similar thing here, uh, where we, where we do a combination here, we do a combination here on that element, uh, and so forth. And uh, the other thing that we have is the right-hand side. Uh, so you see, initially we have this minus dtx1 uh, dx, and, and that's great, uh, except for when we do the next one, we're going to have a minus dtx1, and that's, that's actually going to be a minus dtx2. So the dtx1 and the dtx2, those are going to cancel out, right, and those are going to be gone, and then that's going to leave us with just this 12.5 plus the 12.5 from the next uh, set of equations. So you can see uh, what's happening there. And again, uh, these minus, these 0.4, minus 0.4, and 12.5, this is just what, uh, for their example, they evaluated out in general. You just, you'll have the numbers, uh, and then you'll be able to assemble this, uh, assemble this global uh, set of equations to solve uh, to solve the entire linear system. So when we get it all pu all put together, you can see they're they're carrying out this this math where you do the 0.4 plus 0.4, uh, so we get 0.8 on uh, on the diagonal elements. Um, and in general, of course, it's not 0.8. This is just again uh, what were the values for this problem. But uh, you can see uh, how this total element matrix gets constructed, and then we just have these. Uh, minus dtx1 dx and uh, on one end and this dtx5 dx on on the other end of the system. So again, this is step three, actually assembling the uh, overall finite element matrix, and then the next step will include the boundary conditions.